Let's see. I put this gun together about three, four years ago. Yeah. TD that. and I did it in the shop. We did several AR put togethers, builds. To this day, it is our perfect AR-15 system. We're not changing it. Not ultimately lightweight, but really lightweight. I've talked about the components before. We're not going over it here. So maybe that really cool looking battle comp. You mean the battle comp? <laughs> is that the French pronunciation? I just know it's trapping someone infinitely <laughs> right now. They're like, no, it's not. It's not. Sorry, the official pronunciation is battle comp. <laughs> Dude, you gotta get used to Tactical Doodle. He will mess with you all the time. He is so funny. It's fun. We might even see an appearance of the Swedish chef. Maybe. Maybe, we'll see. But we built this years ago. We still love it. It has a very certain philosophy attached to it. I've spoken of it many times, like in my video called the best AR-15 build in the world. So this is a 16 inch upper. It's a BCM enhanced lightweight barrel. I think that is their handguard too. And then it's paired with this, an 18 inch SPR upper, which can pin into place. So long range, maximum accuracy, maximum velocity, 18 inch, uh, pretty much can do everything 16 inch, but there is more capabilities with our area of operations, which is the high desert of the Western US with this. Zero for 77 grainers right here, Zeroed for freaking uh, XM193 loads, right? Yeah. In fact, I write it right here. So I recommend you do the same. So when you do your range work, keep really good records of what's what. Anyways, this is one of our AR builds. Is this the way to go? The only way to go if you do a roll your own AR. Hmm. Interesting question. It's a question that comes up a lot too. Should I build an AR for my first one? Should I buy one? I would say overall, buy one. Buy one, start shooting it, learn the system, and then if and when you get more money, more time, you can push pin into place other things onto your gun. But at least you have a factory produced AR-15 with a warranty. You'll be happy, you'll sleep better at nights. Which apparently Tactical Doodle did not do in high school. That's why he's about two feet shorter than me. Yeah. We're not kidding. I mean, two feet, that's an exaggeration. He's like, I don't know. You can't. Foot? Are you a foot shorter than me? Yeah, probably. I'm about 5'9", five 5'10", five something like yeah, that. Yeah, no, not a foot then. So I'm like 6'3", six 6'2 six and a half. And he told me just now, but before the camera started rolling, the reason I'm so short is because I did not sleep yeah. in high school. Is it better Late to bed, to early to rise. Makes a man evidently there. super stumpy. Mm, that's interesting. It's not a good saying. It doesn't rhyme. Oh, by the way, true. I did have him, I was going to say force you to do a paper out, but I don't think I forced you. I kind of gave it to you as an option, didn't I? Yeah, I just wanted money. And uh, so we did a paper out with Tactical Doodle. Was it in Spokane you did no, it? it was here. And it was a lot of work. And he got paid crap for it. But man, did he learn to work. About five bucks a day. Speaking of getting up early. Yes. Uh, oh, and one time he was on the tailgate of the truck and I uh, took off and he fell straight on his freaking head. Yeah. I was freaking, man. Yeah, my physics modeling software didn't calculate that right. I thought I'd be able to jump uh, off the moving tailgate and just get rid of all that inertia in the air. Doesn't happen. You oh my maintain gosh. it. I was so hit. worried so when you goes, hit. Whoop. I was so worried as your dad. I was like, oh my gosh. Fun. I was praying and thank Heavenly Father that you weren't hurt. Why did I tell you that story? I don't know. But uh, I guess we're talking about sleeping good at night. And uh, with your own build, if you get it right, uh, you design it and you adhere to it, I think you'll love it. I've talked to a lot of TMP patrons uh, and they say they're doing just that. They're really happy. But I also asked in the Wyndham Armory AR-10 video, do you guys still want us to review factory produced AR-15 rifles? And the answer, actually black rifles. Although in TMP, they're obviously hefty. They're not really black very often. Yeah. Occasionally, right there, occasionally, occasionally. Although yeah, I see it as a, a temporary time, state. Anytime they're black, I'm like, ah, eh, for now. Depends, I mean, I'm kind of bouncing, you know, between the colorations. And we also have some really cool snow gray ones as well. But back to the poll, people said, absolutely, keep reviewing factory produced, dramatic pause, black rifles. Yes, and so here, here we are, we're doing it. Went into Wyatt's store, Gunny's, a great American gun store, Orem, Utah, and we checked out the following gun. Getting back to the philosophy question. 
is a 16 inch, 18 inch combination, the perfect go-to combination. I would say for us, the answer is probably yes. We love it, we're not changing it. But, but if you can get an AR-15 as cost-effective as the one I'm gonna show you right now, as light as the one I'm gonna show you right now, the answer might be uh, just go with this one. And then later on, if you wanna build a 16, a, you know, an 18 inch upper go, and believe it or not, we are gonna review right here, right now, a 20 inch, <laughs> a 20 inch AR-15. Resurrecting the dinosaurs, ladies and gentlemen of TMP. Yeah, I like 20s. No, it goes I've down. always liked 20s. I think they're cool. I've always said that. I always thought it was super cool that the Marines still just kept on rocking the A3, A4, whatever. You could, the 20 yep. inch, the official yep. M16. Yep. Mm -hmm. So cool. With the A2 stock. <laughs> oh, That's <laughs> badass. And we're going to cover that feature right now since we're talking about it. I've always liked the A2 stock. I still love it. You know, Special Ops used A2 equipped SPRs and they loved it. They never complained about it. You got to make sure these screws are kept tight right here, y'all, because it will loosen on you. And it's got the metal trap door. But man, is it comfortable still to this day. So when Wyatt and I were looking for factory produced black rifles to review in TMP, I saw this one. I was like, let's, he and I were both in agreement. Let's do one yeah. with an A2 stock. It's different. It's classic. Still very, very functional. So here we go. But get back to the point, if you get one as cost effective and as lightweight as the Palmetto 20 inch PA 15 for around 575. And it weighs, what? And it weighs what? Seven pounds. Seven pounds. No scope, no mount, no mag. Add four more ounces for a 30 round GI mag. But holy cow, seven pounds for a 20 inch AR. And this is not a pencil barrel, y'all. And it has an A2 stock. So I was like, yeah, we're reviewing that. Would you be happy with this 20 inch AR-15 and all philosophies of use, nothing fancy? No. It's a long barrel for cramp quarters. Anytime, you know, you, you need to go around a corner or actually go in and out of a vehicle, absolutely not. Especially with a non-collapsible stock. <laughs> right. So you got no, what you got. It's um, kind of a special purpose gun. By the way, it comes with an A2 cage on it, but this is not a, uh, this is not, you know, coming with your PA-15. This I, is actually a Kinetitech concussion device. It's like a concussion, um, whatever, muzzle brake device. And TD found these, and I went out and bought some more. Kinetitech, if I'm saying it right, it's the company. Yeah, I bought it on Amazon once just as like a fun little review thing because I wanted to test the type, and I want to say I paid like 20 bucks for it or something. <coughs> and they're not 20 anymore. I not think I'm paying mo. like 50 or 60 bucks per. Yeah. And they come in with like knurled cups on it and so you can unscrew this of course that's unscrewing from the the threads on the end of the muzzle oh why did i put this on a 20 inch uh the reason is actually pretty specific and it'll go to our philosophy of use um and we're going to kind of flesh out what we're the point we're making now do you need a wide variety of barrel lengths with a 20 inch barrel length actually work is it still viable in today's market nice uh, to get to that point first and foremost one advantage of a 20 inch ar-15 and we're kind of jumping ahead here, is just shootability. Holy cow, it's so much quieter than even a 16 inch. I mean, that extra four inches of barrel just makes it quieter. And then when you put something like on this on it, a sound forward muzzle device, I'm not gonna say it's like a suppressor, it ain't. It still has a crack, it still has a noise, but it's much more pleasant. Yeah. Would you agree with that? Oh yeah, it's a lot softer and easier. And some people have said with 20s, you don't have to wear as much hearing protection. Right. I still do. I wouldn't go like single earplugs with this, but. No, I wouldn't either. You got a rifle length direct gas impingement system on the Palmetto 20 inch. They've got their low profile gas block, which is not pinned. I think it's just screwed in position. It did not rotate on us, didn't change. Uh, it's just really soft shooting. I've always liked at least uh, a mid length gas system. Like I've said, I really like rifle gas length systems. They're Rifles cool. the way John Browning designed it. I told you he's going to mess with you. You can't tell him. It takes the fun out of it. God, there's guys already getting on the keyboard. What the? <laughs> it was Eugene Stoner. We will continually mess with you guys because it's funny. Guys will get wrapped up. But uh, smooth shooting, quieter. That's the first advantage of going with a 20-inch. The second advantage is what, TD? Accuracy. Thank you, sir. Accuracy. So how do most... 
most AR-15 owner shoot their guns. Range. What was that? I heard something. Range. Boom, range. Let's be honest. It's not tactical courses. It's not three gun. It's not running and gun, gunning in the desert. It is shooting paper holes at the range. Not everyone's lucky enough to have good land to shoot on and build a course and know that they can just have at it. We're blessed. Do, and buy the targets and the steel and the setup and. Yeah. Oh, by the way, setting that up is a pain in the ass. It sucks. I just want to drive that point home. You're right, though. No one has that. I wouldn't say no one, but few have that land and the ability to do it. So most are got, going to the range. So that being said, you're going to the range. You're going to shoot holes in a target. Are you going to be happier when the holes are like this or like that? I am surprised sometimes. We see dudes content with like, sprays like that. It, it, even like 15 yards would be like, awesome. And you're like, Ooh. Uh, I will say, and I've mentioned a couple tabletops before, that uh, I'll go the range and I have bad days too. Everyone has bad days. But I, a lot of times at 100 yards, the average group I see coming out of black rifles, usually AR 15s, at 100 yards is like this. Guys, uh, it's not like that, but it's like that. With a scope, if you get a red dot or iron sights, and it's like that. That's generally speaking. Back to the point though, a 20 inch AR, if you get a very good barrel, we're gonna talk about the barrel quality in this Palmetto PA 1520, you're gonna get really good accuracy and that's exciting. That's its own reward, it's right? A, it's awesome bringing home a little souvenir where you got tiny little groups and you get to hang it up and think, ah, oh, cool, and look at it till next time and try to beat your own high score every time. By the way, any 18, actually even 16 inch upper will do the same thing. We're not saying these are not capable yeah. or super accurate. This for instance is an Odin Works barrel, Midwest Industries, handguard. This is half MOA capable with the loads it likes and if I'm doing my part. So we're not saying a 20 is like, oh, so much better. We're not, but remember the cost, 575, the weight, seven pounds. Uh, and you're gonna see the accuracy on this thing is pretty stellar. Pretty amazing. Now, another advantage of going with a 20 inch barrel, which you mentioned already is from the Marines. The reason they stuck with that is why? John Browning's original vision. He <laughs> knows exactly what a weapon system needs that is and he exactly designed it correct. all in the year 1910. It was John Moses Browning's vision. <laughs> when he, we're kidding around. When he designed it for the, the nature of the bunker, force. In the bunker, jokes are gonna roll. Occasionally a fart will roll out too. No, ballistic advantage. So you're, it's not going to be huge. I mean, I just look at our, looked at our shooting records with 77 grain match loads, OTM match loads. Out of our other 20-inch uh, AR-15, which we're going to show you, very high-quality barrel, by the way, we get about 2850 feet per second. Out of an 18-inch, which is just two inches different, we're getting about 2990 with the same load. That's about a 60 feet per second difference. Unfortunately, I don't have a 16 inch <laughs> reference point to give you, but it would be even less. Point is with a 20, you're giving that 5.56 five, round a more complete powder burn, obviously some more feet per second, more ballistic advantage. If you're talking about fragmentation of a full metal jacket load, which what's the threshold, like 2,500 feet per second, it's gonna go to a longer range. And by the way, here's one of our, our beloved 20, inch AR builds, which I actually have to swap this handguard out. It's an older Alpha rail from Troy. It's a great rail. It's just kind of heavy. It is funny how when you do an AR build <coughs> like this, it's like a snapshot in time. It is. It's, this is like 2011 around there. This is like going 2011, boom. This was the state of the industry. And at the time, the Troy Alpha rail was actually pretty bitching. It was. The idea it's that a we time could, capsule. Yeah, you could do like rail sections. We were like, man, that's cool. You could put on individual <laughs> sections. True. The reason I haven't swapped the handguard out on this is I don't want to have to do another Duracoat session yeah. of Blackhawk Coyote Tan, which this is. But this is our reference 20, and it had some reliability problems, as I've said about in the project. It's a Bushmaster lower, another upper receiver, and uh, it, we just had problems. I finally got it running good, but now this is an outstanding gun. And this is, I talked about in the review of this, as like how the, it's advantageous, the 20-inch barrel. Is it my go-to? Is it our go-to? Absolutely not. But man, is it fun to shoot? Is it smooth to shoot? More quiet to shoot? And heck, if it weighs seven pounds, there's a lot of philosophies that it could fit into, right? You don't have to worry about it too much. As my go-to war gun, you could. 
You could. I mean, the Marines used it forever, didn't they? And as far as 20s go, this is really handy. That handguard on it is so light. <laughs> you are correct, sir. And on we go into features. So this is put together by Midwest Industries for Palmetto. It's the same handguard we've seen on the other ones. Like we just reviewed the Palmetto PA-15 pistol. That's a Delton in the background right there. And that one has Running a pretty Gym similar. Tech uh, Halo GMT can on it. What's that? No, it's just pretty <clears throat> similar. Uh, and then we have some other fun stuff in the background. Uh, just decorations. I love the handguard though, it's the right diameter. Uh, we did say in the pistol review, and TD brought this up, that when you really heat that front end up on a pistol, it's maybe a little bit too narrow. He yeah. was, we were really burning our hands and we actually caught our suppressor on fire. Not with the Palmetto, it was on the Delton. But people like- Watch for that review. They like them slender in the front. <clears throat> hmm, that's a euphemism. Good handguard, didn't loosen, loosen on us. I absolutely would not take this off. And with a 20 inch, another advantage with that rifle length gas system is it just doesn't heat up the same yeah. way. It heats up slower, it seems like. And so it's a, I don't know, it's just kind of the way the gun was designed by John Moses Browning. In 1908. It was 1908. Look it up, it's on Wikipedia. Picatinny rail, we got M-lock slots. So that Ben guy will love that. Ben, yeah. the TMP Patreon guy, love that guy. Like every month he writes me, writes me about M-Lock or Key Mod. <laughs> <laughs> I do hear guys complain they can't take their accessories off with M-Lock though. Sometimes. I can take either one. Enough of that discussion though. Uh, no QD cups except right here in the base of the handguard of the 20 inch Palmetto. This is a forged upper and lower, no big surprise there. And the forging is, I didn't even check. It's an Anderson forging, it looks like. Anderson. 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 Uh, no big surprise. I mean, standard AR-15 controls. And then we come to, I have like an older, one of our Magpul 20 rounders. This is like a workhorse mag, man. You know how many thousands of rounds yeah. this mag is shot? It's a range mag because it's, you know, it's lower profile for range testing. Then it's got one of those uh, old pools. Remember these, speaking of snapshot in time, everyone act like you had one, have one of these yeah. on your mags. Every what? Point. You don't have a quick pull in your mag? Now no one uses them. Huh. I just have it on this one. Not for what you think, for extracting it. No, it's for dropping it onto concrete so it doesn't uh, damage the magazine. Cool, so normal this. And then actually TD really likes this older school grip right here, kind of A2-ish, right? Yeah, I really like that because low cost ARs almost always come with your standard factory A2. I mean, you're gonna take it off anyways. And at this price point, it's not like this is adding much to the gun. Mm -hmm. So might as well try something funky. Uh, the rubber, I actually don't mind. I always kind of like the hook grip on the SR556 with the finger thing. So this mm -hmm. is really reminiscent of it and I like it. I, I mean, you're probably I, gonna swap it anyways. I'll go ahead and jump to the well, no, I won't. I'm going to stand by. I was going to tell you something, but wait to the end of the video and I'll tell you. Notice it doesn't have the finger hump that a normal A2 does. And like TD said, it is rubber covered. I find that myself relatively obnoxious. I don't like rubber covered uh, any furniture on my so guns. Like I don't. wearing a rubber? Not so much. Uh, this is a standard trigger guard here. It needs a Magpul enlargement. Easy to do. That's like eight bucks. Yeah. Whoop de doo The trigger actually for such a cost effective gun is actually pretty good. And going back to our Springfield Armory Saint review, they have also a nickel boron play to trigger like this one does, two stage. I didn't really like that one too much. I think I complained about it in the review. And this one, I'm not going to say it's a match trigger, but I didn't really think it was obnoxious. Did you? I didn't mind it. In fact, I wouldn't replace it. I have no plans to replace it. Subject to change. Um, it pulls pretty good. I don't have a trigger scale here, but I would say probably... And it's not super light, probably five and a half, six pounds. But uh, when I'm shooting it, I, I don't have to look at the targets we're going to show you. And maybe I made a note about the trigger that I'm forgetting. That does happen. Uh, standard charging handle. We have an M16 bolt carrier group. 9310 bolt, nitride coated, staked, all the standard high quality AR-15 stuff. Yes, not breaking into it now. I might take a picture and roll M4 it M4 feed ramps. Everything has that. Does anything not have those Even now? toy AR-15s have M4 they... feed ramps and they'll, oh wait, they don't make toy AR-15s anymore. Yeah. They're illegal. Don't you have to get like the super A1 M16 builds like in the, the old, old style and even then you read the reviews, people are like, yeah, but it's got M4 feed ramps. 
Yeah. And I bet most guys don't even know what that's for. Oh, does it have M4 feed rates? Uh, yeah, it does. You know what they're for? No. For cyclic rates on M4, so there's no jams. Something you would never have to worry about with this gun, pretty much. Unless I'm really cranking the trigger, which could happen. Talked about the gas system, rifle length, gas system. We have a one in seven twist on a 5.56 chamber, 20 inch barrel. And this barrel still is 4150, by the way. A2 cage again comes on it. You're gonna see the barrel quality here in just a second, by the way. And we talked about the butt stock already. This is a worker bee scope. It's one of our old Burris scopes. And with aero precision mount, use my Amazon link. This is basically all we, all we use anymore. The one thing about aero precision mounts, you gotta make sure you really tighten those up. Probably blue Loctite, I'm talking the screws right here. We usually don't do this because we're swapping scopes. And so if we do that, it's just more hassle. But great mount, it's super lightweight. It's like four ounces, 80 bucks. Okay, so there's the features, down and dirty of the Palmetto Arms PA-15. How did it shoot Tactical Doodle? Did you enjoy shooting this gun? Yeah, it was fun. By the way, this is a rad scope, I like it. It's like ancient, this Burris, and it has like a mil dot reticle. Mil dot. Not illuminated, 30 mil tube. What did I pay for this scope? Getting sidetracked. I bet you I only pay like 300 bucks for it. Just when I was starting out TMP, I bet you. All right, here's the paper. Shot great, soft shooting, relatively quiet. First up is steel rounds. So we got hot shot right here. This is not impressive. American Eagle, not too impressive. PMC, PMC, uh, IWI 77 grain, really impressive right here. These were the first shots. And so I've heard this before and I've talked about a lot. Uh, some of these barrels, I don't know if it's especially the longer ones, they have to break in a little bit. Check this out. We pushed it out. Show that one next right here. We got a ton of paper. I want to go through it kind of quick. This is like, I would say it's our second top target, maybe be our fourth, but now you can see things tightening up. So this is a uh, 75 grain open tip match load. I'm kind of going to start doing that, by the way. I'm not going to say the brands if we bought it, because I don't, I'm not going to promote them. Yeah. I'll just, I'm just going to freaking just tell you what kind it was. And then look at this five round, 75 grain open tip match. <laughs> from a $575 AR-15. Here's Federal AE-223. They gave me some boxes, so they get a name on it. Well, Winchester. Wyatt got you some boxes. Wyatt. Let's That's not go right. giving Federal any credit. He's right, it's Wyatt that did it. I don't know why it said that. Winchester 55 grain. Uh, that one's a really good group. Generally, with a, with a 55 grain FMJ standard target load for your AR, you're gonna get about two inches, maybe three inches out of a lot of guns. Here's more paper. 100 yards, Fiocchi, here I am giving free publicity, 77 grain, American Eagle, IWI, all types of free publicity. I'm kind of kidding about that, by the way. Look at that, bro. Look at that, dude. That's Razor Core right there, dude. I like that stuff. Razor Core's awesome. Razor Core. And uh, this is Freedom Munitions, 75 grain match. Not bad. Doing quite well, actually. Fiocchi, 77 grain. Then we pushed it out to 200 yards with a $575 freaking... <laughs> AR, look at this. Now there's a couple hundred, there's, this one's at 100. I think that one is at 200, but these other ones are at 200 yards, bros. Stop. That's fantastic. 77 grain match loads. Brought it back to 100 because 300 yards scares me. I'm sorry, 200 yards scares me. I'm kidding. And then you have some more decent groups. MagTech. Oh, I did say trigger down arrow. Sorry. Yeah, I guess it isn't that awesome. Pulling in the bunker seems awesome. Freedom munitions kind of all over the place there, American Eagle. But that one target, pull that one really tight one out, TD. The, the accuracy that we're achieving out of a $575 20-inch Palmetto AR-15 is actually pretty amazing, don't you think? Yeah, stock. It's doing that. Yeah, we didn't change the trigger, didn't do anything to it. Will your results be the same? I don't know. Maybe we got a really, really good barrel, but whatever barrel, this, this group of ARs that Palmetto used, I don't know if they're making their own or where they're getting them from. Uh, that's a really good barrel, really good barrel. So is it chrome lined? I forget if it is or not. Didn't check, so I don't know. But I'm kind of thinking it is not at that price level. Fantastic accuracy, and I don't remember a single jam, do you? Uh-uh. We shot about 600 rounds out of it is all. Um, we had other guns to test. 
100% reliable. I don't remember running the can on this. I'm pretty sure we did not, but 100% uh, reliable, very accurate. And that drives to the point, would I buy this gun? Absolutely. In fact, we did buy this gun from Wyatt. It's gonna be a TMP cast member because I think it represents something very interesting. A, a super accurate, reliable, cost effective, and for whatever reason, super lightweight 20 inch AR-15. I honestly cannot believe this thing weighs seven pounds. It's crazy. Uh, now, I didn't weigh it with a Kinetitech on it, but it's amazing. And uh, other features I didn't cover because they're pretty standard, like charging handle and stuff. Uh, getting back to the point, could this be your only AR and you'd be happy with it? Hmm, you know, the 20 inch barrel is a little bit much. I don't know if I'd use this as my go-to barrel length. I wouldn't, but for five, for $600, $575, put it in your mix. Put it in your mix. And then you could actually instead, this is interesting, didn't mention this. Why don't you get, you could get this and instead of going with an 18 inch upper, you just stick with this 20. Mm -hmm. So you get a 16 inch or even something even kookier like a, well, you can do that because this setup is rifle. I was going to say an AR pistol. You'd have to SBR it. And yeah, you'd have to SBR it. But uh, I would say you could go with a 16 inch and then just stick with this 20. So it's basically going to be, hold that please, the same system we showed you earlier, but instead you're going to go with that upper. So again, I can't believe we're giving so much publicity, positive publicity to Palmetto, but when a manufacturer gets it right, they get it right. I went to their website tonight, and of course, all the complete rifles are showing what? Sold out. Sold out, out of stock, which means to me they're building these in batches, and so that batch is sold out to the, I don't know, distributors and gun stores. It'll be back in stock. Check with Wyatt, Gunnies, this is where I want you to go. Support the guys that support TMP, of course. Dude, it's, it's a slam dunk, slam dunk. It, it, a lot of ways, I think that the 20 inch AR is kind of like special purpose like this one in the background, like the MG42. No, just yeah. kidding, like this one right here. So this is special purpose, right? The AR pistol, like we said in this review, we wouldn't use this for everything. This is not our go to go to war AR. I think this would be more so than that, don't you? Oh yeah. Can you believe how quiet that this would be if we put that can on here? Oh, it'd be silent. It'd be whispering death. Bunk review coming to a close. Get ready to get sad. And start searching for those cat videos in YouTube. You're excited about this gun, aren't you? I think it's great. If you're gonna do like a, a lightweight 20 inch build, or even if you're doing like a Mark 12 build, mm -hmm. it's an awesome buy. Is this an awesome buy? Yeah. Yeah. Is it smooth? Yeah. There's a leak in here somewhere. Heavier than air. Time to sign off from the bunker because we need oxygen. Fresher air than this. Yeah, great job, Palmetto. It's a slam dunk, like I said. Signing off. <coughs> <coughs> Why is it so bitter?